the thing that the drums are about is twice his, his uh, size. And so he was playing 55 years old. That's that to be absolutely good. This is Peter Erskine, the Jim from New Jersey. Hey, I'm sorry, did you see him behind those drums? Yes, sir. You can see all that. Oh, okay. All right, let's see you. Thank you. I'm a jazz drummer, I'm a music educator, I've been playing the drums for 55 years. I always knew I was going to be a drummer. I think that first drum set my father made for me, that conga drum, that little cymbal, uh, was a kind of a compass, you know, so I followed it. As drummers, we get to make up a whole lot of what we do, but in every part of playing a beat, uh, we have choices. You know, we can syncopate it here or syncopate it there. Uh, we can make it more simple, more complex. It's all about making choices, and that's the very definition of freedom, I think. Maybe one of the most amazing experiences I ever had on stage. It was during a uh, Joni Mitchell concert. Herbie Hancock uh, was on hand to guest on a few tunes on the piano. His time feel was so, it's kind of, it was, it's sort of like some kung fu thing. The, the key, the energy of it was astonishing. You know, any sense of transcendency normally happens uh, when I'm playing with others, uh, not in the solo experience. I mean, it might, but to me it's just much more interesting uh, creating music uh, with other musicians. When I joined Weather Report, I had uh, played in, in two big bands, the, the big bands of Stan Kenton and then Maynard Ferguson. One tour, we were playing in Europe, and uh, the last tune of the night was this very loud, fast, and kind of furious piece that repeated. So I going up to Joe Zavano. In good faith, I give him the, the, the cue, like, okay, almost on afterburners here, let's, let's finish it. And he just looked at me and kind of smiled, leaned into his keyboards, and now the song has to go through another whole minute, 90 second cycle of this very loud, you know, there's no turning back. I have to maintain or increase the intensity. And I was getting ready to finish it to him. So, so now I'm furious, I feel betrayed. And I, and he looks over, please. He's won this little uh, battle. Uh, and he, he signals, okay, now we end. And so the whole band ends. The lights go off on cue. I don't end. I'm, I'm just like, forget it. So I'm hitting the snare drums as, as hard as I can in anger. Now this is the end of the concert, and so far I have no idea how I'm going to get out of this thing, but I'm not worrying about it. I'm just dealing with this pure moment of, I don't know what. The next day at Soundcheck, I walk in and there's the whole band, Joe, Zavano, 
Wayne Shorter, Jaco Pastorius, Bobby Thomas Jr., and they all have a Dixie cup with cognac. And uh, they passed me one, and Joe said, last night, Peter graduated. I hear so many great young musicians playing this music, and they play the music because they love the music. They're drawn to it, they're inspired by it. When I was a kid, uh, you know, jazz was everywhere. You heard it everywhere you went, things changed. The music business is, is in a very strange place right now. We don't have the opportunities to play the music in concert, or to make albums. The heyday of recordings in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, those, those days seem to be gone. But in its place is something uh, quite exciting. Can you see it? Yes. It's kind of a mess. Yeah, it is. Now, it's all over the place. Contrast that or compare the great percussionist Wade Colbreth demonstrating his three stroke roll on the MGM stage. Really good, good audio. It's a straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down. Stick heights are the same. The consistency is remarkable, total perfection. Yeah. Just, and so that's the goal. The mental relationship exists in every aspect of music making, certainly in bands where you have an older musician who uh, uh, works with the younger, less experienced musician. Always being the younger guy, or the youngest guy, in most of the bands. You know, I was there to learn. I always knew that these people know more about this than I do. When I was uh, acting as a judge at a jazz competition, and the judges were asked to come up and perform. The other musicians turned, take a solo. And I was so like not wanting to be there, I dropped both my sticks. My wife, she said something quite profound. She said, uh, well, you were only breathing from here. And I realized that my ego had, had choked Everything off, oxygen, blood, spirit, art, any chance of musicality was lost. I've learned more about breathing, more about acceptance, more about gratitude. And ultimately in music, it's, it's really a, a, a process of, of listening. That's the best advice you can give to any musician. Listen, 